Welcome back. We are here for another lecture on uh, pre-calculus and this section is, uh, this lecture is on section 6.3, trigonometric functions of angles. Uh, we'll be talking about some, <laughs> repetitively from last unit, some of the very same things that we talked about before, but this time, just like last lecture, we'll be framing it in terms of triangles instead of circles. Okay, so uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and jump right in. And here we go. Uh, very first thing that we're going to look at, which is not something I should have erased, is again these things. These are trigonometric functions, right? Of angles. <laughs> <laughs> so this is, this is, you know, really just sort of some, uh, just like repetition of the last section. I think it's hilarious that they do this, but here we are, we, we brand new section, and let's talk about trig functions of angles. And hey, remember those things we learned last time? <laughs> there they are. These are, these are them. Oh wait, I forgot the reciprocals. Cosecant is always the reciprocal of sine, which is the radius over y. And secant is the reciprocal of cosine, which is the radius over x. And cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent, which means it's x over y. And there's some, there's some stipulations here. We can't be working with a radius zero circle Okay, radius <laughs> cannot be zero. If it were, we'd be asking ourselves, what circle, what triangle? We'd be dealing with a point here. Additionally, these guys are not defined if x is zero or y is zero. So we also make the stipulation the stipulations that these guys cannot be zero either. Okay, because if they are, we're up a creek. Okay, so this is literally what I talked about four minutes ago in the previous lecture. And if you're watching these videos back to back, it's literally four minutes ago. These are them, these are the trigonometric functions of angles. And uh, there's another sort of idea here, and then it comes straight from the drawing I had last time. It's that in this right triangle that we drew, where the terminal point of this angle, sort of on this circle, remember, has the coordinates x, y, then we have this relationship here. x squared plus y squared equals r squared. And if we take square roots of both sides, r, the hypotenuse length, is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. Okay, <laughs> that's it. Now we're gonna draw some pictures of different triangles in different quadrants, and we're gonna look at, <laughs> we're just gonna look at uh, how the signs of these guys change. Okay, so we're gonna drop triangles again, uh, but they're gonna look a little different because they're not gonna be opening up and to the right. They're gonna open up and to the left or down and to the left or down and to the right. And we're gonna look at these six trig values in terms of their signs again. Okay, and after that, we're gonna look at again some common identities that we've we've learned before. Um, because everything that applied in chapter five with circle trig applies here with triangle trig because this triangle can just be placed inside a circle. So this is gonna seem very repetitive, but if, if you needed to see this again when you were learning this stuff in the previous chapter, then here you are seeing it again. If not, this is just gonna be really repetitive. So, you know, this would be great if, uh, if the Zoom people are listening to this please put a shape 
which is a triangle <laughs> in, the, in the automatic drawing section. Please, oh, that would be great, but it's not. So. so here's our right triangle that we just had. And if this is the origin, this is the point zero, zero, then what do we know about this x, y pair over here? Well, we know both of them are positive, right? And so if we take this height y and we divide uh, uh, y over x to get the tangent, but what's, what is tangent? Tangent is a positive number, right? Right. So if we, if we sort of frame any triangle, any triangle in quadrant one, All right, you remember this, quadrant one is this first, first section of the plane in the top right. Any triangle drawn up there, tangent's gonna be positive. All right? what about cosine? Cosine is this x divided by this radius r, whatever x squared plus y squared square root it is. Well, that's also gonna be positive. What about sine? Uh, I guess I should be referencing this angle here, shouldn't I? Of this angle. <laughs> uh, sine and cosine, x and y, over r, those are still positive ratios. So in quadrant one, we still have that all of these trig values are positive. Okay, there's no negative functions for a triangle with the corner, I'll call it, in quadrant one. What about in quadrant two? So I now extend my hypotenuse out up and to the left. I drop my vertical down and I draw my horizontal over. Well now, what do we have? We have our x, y is actually a negative x, isn't it? And our y is still positive. Here's our right angle. Here's our y. Here's our negative x. Sometimes, there we go. Sometimes it's not worth trying to move something in zoom. Here's our angle. So we'll call this one theta now. Well, what about tangent? Tangent is going to be the opposite side, y over negative x. x is going to be negative, so tangent is now negative. Okay, tangent is negative. What else is negative over here in quadrant two? Well, just like before, the radius has to be positive, but just like before, the only one that is also negative here is cosine, because cosine is this x value over the radius r. So cosine is also going to be negative. What about positive? A sine. A sine is a positive y value divided by a positive radius value. This is just the opposite side divided by the radius. Okay, how about in, qu in quadrant three? We did this, uh, remember we did this all with, um, we did this again with um, trig values in, uh, in the circle, so this shouldn't be too too crazy to think about or remember. Um, so now in quadrant three, which of the six trig functions, I guess I'm just doing the main three, you can infer the other signs uh, from this. In quadrant three, which ones are negative functions and which ones are positive functions? Well, again, we'll look at this point here. It's x and y. Which ones are negative? Well, we're going to the left of the origin, so x is negative, and we're going to we're going below the origin, so y is negative. Tangent of this angle is the opposite side negative y divided by the adjacent side negative x. So that's positive. And this radius is still a positive length out from the origin. And if we take a ratio of a negative coordinate divided by positive, we get a negative overall. So this tells us that both sine and cosine are negative functions if we have a triangle that's found in quadrant three.
And the last one is, what if we have a triangle that ends or sits in quadrant four? Well, well this, this x coordinate's gonna be positive now because we're to the right of the origin. This y coordinate's gonna be negative because we're below the origin. So if we're talking about this angle here, I suppose if I'm labeling these correctly, this one should have four dashes. One, two, three, and four. They don't have to be the same angle, right? Um, the x coordinate's positive, the y coordinate is negative, which means the height is below and the x is to the right here. Um, well, the tangent this time is gonna be a ratio of negative y over positive x. So the tangent is now a negative function and so is the sine. This radius is always a positive length. It's just the length of that hypotenuse. Uh, and that's going to be the divisor of this y. So we get sine is negative y over positive r, which means it's a negative function. Cosine is the only positive function in quadrant four. Okay, so this gives you an idea of in quadrant one, all the trig functions are positive functions. In quadrant two, if a triangle is in quadrant two, we've got two negative, uh, two negative um, functions, tangent and cosine, and one positive, sine. In quadrant three, we've got two negatives, this time sine and cosine, and one positive. And in quadrant four, two negatives, tangent and sine, and one positive, cosine. And this all has to do with just where that triangle is placed. Okay, this is this is exactly akin to where that terminal point was on the circle when we dealt with trigonom uh, trigonometry values before. If the terminal point ends in quadrant one or quadrant two or quadrant three or quadrant four, you have these exact negative and positive uh, characteristics of the trig functions. Okay, it's exactly the same. Um, right, your book next goes on to finding reference angles, and it does it exactly the same as what you've seen before. Uh, so we're, we're not gonna go through that again. Um, it's 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 exactly the same. There's two pages dedicated to it. We've already done it. Um, so in the previous video, you can go back and and watch that. I do. I think think I did an okay job back then. So you can do it again. But just to save me time, and uh, I'm gonna just skip over that. Uh, the next page in this section goes over some. They call them fundamental identities, and I agree with them. They are fundamental, um, but it's just a repetition of what we've seen before. So how do we define the reciprocal functions? For example, cosecant of theta and secant of theta and cotangent. Well, these are exactly the reciprocals of the other functions. Cosecant is one over sine whether we're talking about a circle or a triangle, it's the same as what we said, as what we knew before. Secant of theta, it's one over cosine. And cotangent is one over tangent. Additionally, this is equal to cosine over sine. Remember, tangent is sine over cosine, so this is the reciprocal, so cosine over sine. Um, what are the other ones that we learned about before? These ones were the reciprocal identities. Before we learned about also the Pythagorean identities. Pythagorean. Uh, and they dealt with this nice relationship 
of having sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1 of 4, didn't we? But what is this? What is this in terms of a triangle now? That's an altogether different question. Let's see, is it still 1? So we'll take some triangle. This is the x, this is the y, and this is a radius r. We'll make this a right triangle. And what do we know here? We know that x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. That's just the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, it can be proved in hundreds, hundreds of ways. <laughs> There's websites dedicated to sort of uh, curating all the different proofs of this. So this is, this is a well-known fact. x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Well, let's look at now this in terms of this triangle. So let's fix an angle. Say this one's theta now. What is sine of theta? Sine of theta is, is what? It is y over r, which means y is r times sine theta. Okay, we'll square that. What is cosine of this angle? Cosine of this angle is x over r. So x is r times cosine of theta. Okay. So if we square both these things, what do we have? We have r squared plus, uh, times cosine squared plus r squared times sine squared. So I'm just going to factor that out. We definitely know this. We definitely know this is 1. We showed that last chapter. Okay, so the Pythagorean theorem for the unit circle says that that is 1. So we know that this is in fact r squared. Right? Okay. Okay, great. Um, so on the left side we've got r squared times cosine squared plus r squared times sine squared. So we definitely know that this is equal to r squared. Right? All right, so now what are, we, what are we gonna say? We're wondering if the Pythagorean identity should be something different. We definitely know on the right side, we've got this, this left-hand side of this equal sign is, is this, and on the right side, we showed just a minute ago that this is in fact equal to r squared. So let's divide everything by r squared. And what do we get? Cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta is just one. Okay, this is no different. It's no different at all. You have the exact same identity whether you're dealing with a unit circle or a circle of any arbitrary radius r. This Pythagorean theorem holds no matter what. Okay, so it's just sort of an aside to talk about that. Just because we've extended our circle out to some higher radius or some smaller radius than one, this, this identity doesn't change. We can still take the sine of the angle plus the cosine, sorry, the square of the sine of the angle plus the square of the cosine of the angle, we still will get one. This Pythagorean identity spawned two others where we divided everything by sine squared to give us one plus tangent, uh, cotangent squared theta equaling 1 over sine squared, which is cosecant squared, and where we divided everything here by cosine squared, which gives us tangent squared plus 1 equals <clears throat> secant squared. Okay, these are the three Pythagorean identities. These still hold for right triangle functions right triangle trig functions. Okay, 
because the Pythagorean identity still held, these two also hold. Um, and that's it. Uh, now there's one sort of additional thing that they talk about in this section. Uh, and it has to deal with finding areas of triangles. Um, so I'll just go over that real quick. It's not too crazy. But it is this. Suppose you know a triangle, as shown here, has a, an angle here, which is actually not right. Oh boy, that's not a right angle. We'll, we'll say that has an angle theta. And let's say that this side length is A. We'll say that this side length is B. Okay. What is the area of this triangle? Well, it turns out that this area is equal to 1 half, the product of A and B, uh, times the sine of the angle. Okay, interesting, very interesting. Where do we get this? Well, this is still a triangle. So if we could sort of like compute its base length and if we could compute its height, I mean, we could, we could do that. And we could, uh, of course, using the things that we've learned about right triangle trig, and we could just use this 1 half base times height idea area of any triangle is always equal to one half its base times its height. So what are those things in here? Well, here we go. One half. We've got to fix something. We've got to fix either A or B as a base or a height. It's suggested here that A is our base. So we'll just say A is our base. And what is our height then? It, it must be B times sine theta. Hmm? <laughs> it must be. How do we get that? How do we get that? Hmm. Hmm. So think about this in terms of additional triangles. OK, think about this in terms of additional triangles. Uh, you could draw other triangles on here that are right triangles. You could sort of do this and then what you'd have is you'd have this right angle here B is the hypotenuse right B is the hypotenuse of this angle okay sine is is sine of what angle is now the question um, that you'd have to consider <laughs> where theta comes into this but b times the sine of theta is going to give you this height. You could also think about another triangle. Uh, you could think about this triangle here. Which has a right angle in it. And then this angle here is nice. This, this is 180 minus theta. It's a really nice one. B is still the hypotenuse of this, right? It is still the hypotenuse. And uh, well, we want to know the height of this triangle over here. So how do you find that? Well, that's related to the sine of this 180 minus theta. But what do we know about sine and angles like that? Well, here's our theta. If we have the same reference angle, theta, <laughs> over here, what's this angle? What's well, 180 minus theta, isn't it? In terms of degrees. So the sine of 180 minus theta equals the sine of theta. So b times sine theta gives me that height. Oh, well, that's real nice. Uh, it's, it's of note, by the way, um, if you choose this triangle that I had before. You can't use A as your base. Okay, just, just as an FYI, you need to use this 
as your base. Okay. Um, but if we choose this other one, which was, as I said, nice, this 180 minus theta one, it, it makes perfect sense. Here's the base of our triangle, okay? The height of our triangle is right over here, <clears throat> okay? And we can find that height by taking B times sine of 180 minus theta, and that's degrees minus theta in degrees, which is equal to sine of theta. And that's where this formula comes from. So if you've got some triangle that's not a right triangle, if you know one of the angles and the two side lengths adjacent to that angle, you can find the area of that triangle through this formula. You take the product of those two side lengths, you take the sine of the angle you know there in between those two side uh, sides that you know, you take the product of all three of those things, you multiply by one half and you've got yourself the area of that triangle. Okay. Um, this can be a useful thing, right? It, it's sort of an idea, uh, you know, how do you find the area from a minimal number of measurements? Well, two side lengths and an angle is sort of like a minimal amount of information you need. Um, what does it keep you from doing? It keeps you from having to measure these other angles, and it keeps you from measuring this longer distance. Okay, so you can walk two short distances, and not have to make a round trip. Um, yeah, that's the idea of it, at least. So that's it for section 6.3. That's all of it. Uh, again, not too long of a section. So with that, uh, we are done with section 6.1, 6.2, 6.3. Um, keep in mind, again, that homework for this is due uh, next Monday the 26th. Got a quiz on these three next Friday the 30th of April. Um, and then April's over. All right? So when your quiz over this is done next Friday, April is, is that's the last day, second to last day, second to last day of April. Uh, no, I take that back, the last day of April. What was I thinking? Um, and then there's two weeks left two weeks left so we are coming down to it this is getting exciting for me um, I hope it's getting exciting for you the end of the school year brings about uh, big changes and uh, well, summer obviously so hopefully hopefully you've got some summer plans lined up uh, maybe a summer job maybe just a summer relaxation um, but uh, I hope you're looking forward to it and I hope this movie helped with section 6.3. Uh, and if not, shoot me an email. I'm happy to respond to your questions and, um, and uh, get back to you on that. So until then, I'll see you next time.